the Minister of Justice and asks, has he received advice on the benefits of having spending caps in the MMP referendum? The yeah. Honourable Chris Finlayson. On behalf of the Minister of Justice, yes, and I've also received advice that the previous referenda on the electoral system in 1992 and 1993 and the super referendum in 1997 had no cap on spending and no need to register with the Electoral Commission. All that was needed was a promoter statement. In fact, I'm advised that no government referendum in the post-war period limited spending by third-party campaigners. Dr. Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, can he explain the logic of requiring spending caps in an election campaign and in a citizens-initiated referendum, but not for a referendum on the future of democracy in New Zealand? The Honourable Chris Finlayson. On behalf of the Minister of Justice, yes, I can. The spending limit for the citizens-initiated referendum was introduced as part of a package of measures to limit the ability of groups or individuals both to initiate a referendum and to campaign on that referendum. What we have here with a government referendum where the issue is not put to the public by, but by a third party is an elected government rightly carrying out its campaign pledge to voters. The Honourable Leanne Dalzell. And to accept the advice from the Ministry of Justice that influence that wealth can have on the outcome of a referendum is debatable over the advice that the rationale for regulating advertising is to avoid the influence of wealth on the outcome by overwhelming other voices in the public information campaign. The Honourable Chris Minister. On behalf of the Minister of Justice, what's happened here is there's been a, an endeavour to balance a number of interests and the interest that the member apparently has overlooked is the issue of freedom of expression. But what the proposal in the bill does uh, is uh, place a, an obligation on anyone who spends over $12,000 during the regulated period to register with the Commission. So there is a balancing, and freedom of expression uh, is a very important factor. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, does the Minister believe that there is freedom of expression during election campaigns when there are spending caps? And if so, why not have spending caps during the MMP referendum and also protect freedom of expression? The Honourable Chris Finlayson. Uh, well, yes, of course, I uh, on behalf of the Minister, I believe uh, that there are very important freedom of expression uh, issues in an election campaign, and that is why the National Party fought so hard against the repulsive electoral finance legislation. But the point is that what we've tried to do with this legislation... Well, I can and to receive a lecture on Section 7 from Annette King when there was no Section 7 on the electoral finance uh, bill's a bit rich. But what we've tried to do here, what we've tried to do here is balance freedom of expression and introduce the requirement of registration. And I have to say also that the, 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 campaign for, the campaign for better government, the campaign for better government in 1992-93 spent huge sums of money uh, to advance its particular views. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, does the Minister agree with the 1986 Royal Commission on the Electoral System when it said that it's not fair if some in the community use their relative wealth to exercise disproportionate influence in determining who is to govern and what policies are to be pursued? And if so, does he agree that the same logic applies to the MMP referendum? The Honourable Chris Finlayson. On behalf of the Minister, one, of the, uh, one can see where the member is coming from, and that is the reason why the registration... Uh, requirement has been introduced and that covered, coupled with freedom of expression addresses the members' concerns. Question number five. A point of order, the Honourable Leanne Dalzell. Can I seek leave to table the regulatory impact statement on the electoral referendum bill? As the, um, as the House will be aware, the Government no longer publishes them with the bill itself, but I leave believe us, that the House should look at the leave detail us to of table the that document. Is there any objection? Statement. Did I hear objection? There is objection. Uh, question number five. Oh, point of order, Dr Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, I seek to leave of the House to table Chapter 8 of the Royal Commission's report, which is the chapter on political finance from which my quote was taken. Leave is sought to table that document. Is there any objection? There is no objection. 
Question number five, the uh, point of order, the Honourable Land. Mr. Land Speaker, Elsa. I seek leave to table the advertising section of the regulatory impact statement alone without the rest of the regulatory impact statement. Leave is sought to table that portion of the impact statement. Uh, is there any objection? There is objection. Point of order, point of order the Honourable Trevor Mallard. M Mr. Speaker, it's just a, a slight question about consistency of, of, of ruling. Uh, you've just put, and I was very surprised, to the House. Uh, the question of leave for uh, the tabling of a Royal Commission chapter, something which has been published by this House? I, uh, th what was going through my mind at the time was, and I may have misheard it, if I misheard I, I do apologise to the House, but I understood it was the Royal Commission report from the 1980s, and it was my judgement on the spur of the moment that that was something that members may not be so familiar with, and therefore I felt it was not unreasonable to, uh, to put that leave to the House. Question number five, the Honourable David Parker. Thank you, Mr.